It's a pleasure to be back, as usual, uh, at the NATO Defense uh, Minister's meeting. Uh, this is a practice that uh, we have now established uh, since uh, uh, we started our common work with Jens Stoltenberg. I would be glad also to welcome him on Monday at the Defense Minister's meeting of the European Union, where we will continue to work uh, uh, on uh, EU-NATO cooperation in the strongest possible manner. I know that uh, uh, Secretary General mentioned this also in his press conference. We're working on a series of concrete uh, set of measures, some of them already implemented, especially on hybrid threats, cyber, maritime security, but also new proposals. Uh, we're just uh, working this week in the European Union for instance, on facilitating military mobility within the European territory, which is something that will be beneficial also for the Alliance. On the issue we're discussing tonight, DPRK, uh, I'm just back from Washington DC, where I discussed with our American friends our common approach to prevent um, a major uh, crisis, a major uh, negative uh, development in terms of nuclear proliferation. The European Union has increased its level of uh, economic sanctions on the DPRK. It's the country on which we have the toughest sanction regime in the world as the European Union. And we intend this uh, to be uh, pushing for uh, the creation of a political space to engage in negotiations. Uh, we always uh, believe sanctions are aimed at uh, pushing uh, countries to enter into diplomatic negotiations. This is also why we attach such a great importance in this moment to keeping the Iran nuclear deal uh, up and running. We see this as delivering. I discussed this also in these days uh, with our friends in, uh, in Washington DC and I'm confident we will manage to keep the Iran nuclear deal um, in place. Thank you very much and I'll join the meeting. Thank you. On the, uh, on the Iran deal, is there any, after your meetings in Washington this week, do you feel there's any appetite in Europe for increasing the pressure on Iran through sanctions directly related to, say, the ballistic missile program or its regional sort of in interference? We have uh, in the European Union uh, strong concerns about both the ballistic missile programs and uh, some of the uh, policies in the region, especially linked to the conflict in Syria or in Yemen. Uh, we uh, made clear, very clear, uh, that uh, these issues have to be tackled outside of the nuclear agreement that covers only nuclear-related issues. For us, uh, it's very important to keep the nuclear agreement uh, as it is. Uh, negotiation, renegotiation is not possible in our view. Uh, and you do not change an agreement that is delivering. Uh, outside of the agreement, in the proper uh, foreign formats, uh, we uh, are already addressing some of the issues that are of concern. Uh, the European Union has kept some of the non-nuclear related sanctions in place, in particular on uh, terrorist activities or human rights. Uh, so definitely we are ready to address other issues, but in a separate manner. And once it's very clear that the nuclear uh, deal uh, implementation is preserved by all sides at full, including Iran, that uh, uh, is working currently well with the IEA. Uh, and I met also the Director General of the IEA in Washington, uh, Dr. Amano, that uh, uh, reiterated to me his assessment that they're having the appropriate access. Uh, and uh, we trust the agency's uh, independence and technical knowledge uh, to monitor uh, in a very strict manner uh, that all the nuclear commitments that Iran has taken are uh, actually met. And we will continue to keep the highest possible attention uh, for the strictest possible implementation of the agreement in all its components and by all sides. Thank you. Were you already asked, and forgive my lateness, uh, about the issue of EU-NATO cooperation on military mobility? This is something that both the, the Commission, NATO, uh, and member states are talking about. What's the possibility of having the two organizations work closely together on this issue of military logistics and border crossing? Uh, I just mentioned this. Uh, in exactly this week, uh, the European Union is uh, putting forward towards the end of the week, uh, proposals uh, to overcome some of the obstacles that currently are uh, making the life of our military complicated uh, when they need to move around the European territory. Uh, there are national uh, legislations and European regulations that uh, uh, need to be addressed. Uh, we are doing this on the European Union side, and this is a perfect example where um, Issues that we identify as, uh, um, as issues that need to be addressed both in NATO and in the European Union can be solved by the European Union. In this way, um, benefiting also the alliance. Uh, 
so expect in the coming uh, three days, I would say, uh, news from the European Union side, very concrete ones, to overcome some of the obstacles of the uh, military mobility in the European uh, Union territory. And this is exactly a perfect example of excellent cooperation between the European Union and NATO. Thank you. Thank you very much.